Hello, today is the day. I'm going to drive Teeter Tot, my pissed off potato with wheels, for the first time since, I don't know, like March or something? I don't even know the last time I drove this car. For all you new folk, there is a link up above to the last video where I did my first start on the TT after replacing the turbo and a bunch of other stuff. I have not touched this thing since the last video you guys watched. As you can clearly see, there's still a mess in my garage. So this is it. This is the first time I'm going to move this car under its own power. So let's do some work. Anything underneath the car? No? Okay. I take my life insurance policy out of here. You too. There's a clipper doodle. Another clipper doodle. Nope, don't wanna set you down on the cord. Maybe if I'm lucky, I can get an alignment done in this video. I'm gonna try to, that way I can really drive it. Oof, look at that. Looks so clean. Now, I gotta get hardware for the top of the bumper. I literally have one bolt holding it in. And uh, yep, coolant needs to be bled still. So many of you have recently commented about the state the headlights are currently in. Yes, I know they need to be taken care of. However, have you seen the paint on this car? <laughs> I'm trying to get the car running first before I worry about cosmetics. I really need to get new terminals though. These ones are kind of cruddy. I'll be sure to do that. All right. I wanna hear how the cold start sounds on this thing from the outside, so I'm gonna put you guys down behind the car. actually not too too loud now once it's warmed up. I've been sitting here for like 15 minutes now with the car idling and I've been turning on the heat on and off cycling it trying to see if there's any air trapped in the coolant system. Temperature is saying dead even in the center so that's good. I also need to hook up the Rostec VCDS and uh, clear my ABS fault and see if that comes back now that replaced all the ABS rings and sensors on the car. Doesn't seem like there's any air trapped in the system. That's good. It's really good. Mark 1 TT. Start. Start. All right, let's see what there is. The only thing that came back was for the AC pressure sensor, which is disconnected because the AC needs to be charged on the car. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna drive it. Keep in mind I can't go very far because the car needs an alignment and I don't want to destroy these brand new tires. So we'll just take it for a quick spin. So much for this drive. There's something majorly wrong with the turbo. It is not banking any boost. I found the problem. I, uh, I blew the hose clamp off the charge pipe. Holy crap, it's gone, I don't know where it is. I heard it make a weird noise, but I didn't know what it was. I bet you anything, I just forgot to put that thing on there when I put this engine back together because I was so tired by the time I finished up. Round two, here it goes. I literally made it down the street. I hadn't even turned on my GoPro yet. And I blew the coupler right behind the headlight at the intercooler. I need better intercooler piping for this thing that can hold the boosts. I really hope I can do this without taking the bumper off. I really don't want to take the bumper off to do this. The front bumper has to come off. There's no way to get to it without doing that. Yay. I should have went full ricer and drove the car with the front bumper off anyway. There it is. Look at that. 
I need better intercooler piping. And unfortunately, this is real life and I don't have access to a full shop full of TIG welders and piping benders and machinists and all kinds of crap. Normally intercooler piping has a bead rolled around the very edges that your clamps will have something to bite onto to create mechanical adhesion. But because I don't have the correct piece that goes in here, the only thing I could do is kind of use a pair of vice grips and dimple the edge of that. So uh, I gotta get creative and fix this however I can. That's tight. Here goes my third attempt. I got a check engine light from when the intercooler piping popped off, so I'm gonna clear that real quick, and then we'll go for a drive. I'm gonna go real quick and data log with my Ross Tech, my commanded boost in the boost at the intercooler, and see just with that, like a rough guess if I have a boost leak. It's kind of like a crude way of checking, but for now, until I can do a proper boost leak test, um, yeah. Stop data log. Uh, where's my data log? This isn't what I wanted. I wanted my data log. So I went to pull the TT back into the garage and when I started the car up again to move it in here, there was an enormous loud chatter coming from the engine bay. My first gut instinct was something catastrophic in the engine and the bottom end like rod knock or something, but it went away when I pushed in the clutch unless I revved it, it would come back on D cell. It's been a couple hours since this happened. I've been doing some research and uh, there's something in the bell housing clutch flywheel related, probably because it has a stock dual mass flywheel on there that has let loose and the transmission needs to come off, which is a huge job on this car. Best way I can show you guys is to just start the car real quick. So I'm gonna do that. I'm only gonna let it run for a second though because it's kind of late at night. when I engage the clutch, it's not as loud with the clutch engaged, but you disengage the clutch and it's loud, like crazy at idle. What also aided that diagnosis was the fact that you can feel it in your foot on the clutch pedal. So if you partially engage the clutch, you can hear the, the noise and it corresponds with what you feel in your foot. You actually see right here on this picture of the dual mass flywheel, the springs that attach the two halves together in the middle. These are likely what came apart on mine and is causing this inner plate to just bounce around and rattle inside there. The question is, do I fix it? Or do I just get rid of this car and count my losses? It's a new day and I did some thinking last night and research on the depth of this conundrum. And uh, it's looking like this. This is actually not a smart idea. It's gonna hit me. <laughs> Parts wise, it's gonna cost roughly $1,500 total for everything to do a clutch, flywheel, and all the associated hardware and such that should be done at that current time. However, the fine people at Audi quote this job at around 12 hours of labor, which as you know, is at a Audi service center done by Audi technicians that work on Audis every single day, not a girl working in a home garage with minimal tools by herself. That beeping's kind of annoying, isn't it? Oops. 
kind of sad. I can't just sell a car broken as is though because I put so much time and labor into this thing. It makes no sense to give up on it. So that's what I gotta do. I gotta fix it. But I gotta find a clutch and flywheel company that's willing to help out or willing to get advertising for their products. I should look at it that way. Here, this is the easiest way to explain what I'm trying to tell you guys. This is a transmission from the service manual. As you can see right here is the input shaft that goes into the back half of the engine. And then right here for your transfer case is the other part you have to line up. So you have to line up this right here as well as this guy right here. There's a stink bug over here and it just sprayed and it smells like bug farts. You can totally feel it in your left foot when you partially engage the clutch. Right when you start hearing the rattle, I can feel it like it's rotating on my foot. If I'm gonna replace the clutch on this thing, I need to upgrade it as well too because the car is tuned now. So it's probably making, I would guess, a little over 300 pound feet of torque. So I should get a clutch that's rated for around 350 or 400 just to be safe. Looks so much cleaner and nicer in here. I can't give up on that thing. I still love that car even though it doesn't love me back. I'm gonna do a mail time. It's time for mail time. I have not done a mail time in like two and a half months. So there's a ton of mail right here and I'm gonna try to get through it as fast as I possibly can so I can get as many people's mail in the video as I possibly can. So this is gonna get speedy. What? <laughs> no! Who is this from? Oh no! <laughs> It's a bag of penguins! Somebody sent me a bag of penguins so I can measure the center consoles on vehicles and how many penguins will fit. There's a whole bag of penguins. I'm gonna cry. This is so cute. Why are penguins making me cry? I'm so emotional. You have to be kidding me. The second package I opened. Thank you, Jeff, for the penguin. This package was sent out by Olsa Tools, a set a mini set, many, many sets of socket organizers for me. So shout out to Olsa Tools for sending this. Their link is down below. I really appreciate you guys and hopefully if I get a new toolbox soon, these will look amazing in there with all my sockets organized. Thank you, Tim, for the two pound hammer. I will whack some stuff with this. Thank you, Joseph, for the scented meatball. Weird, but cute. Shane in Idaho. I'm not a hoe, actually. I'm high class. Thank you, Shane in Idaho, for the safety wire pliers and the safety wire. I will definitely make use of this. And if you guys don't know what safety wire is for, it's, it's an aircraft mechanic thing. You should check it out, it's very useful stuff. Ah, more penguins. Penguins! More penguins. Thank you, Ben, for the penguins. His nose looks like a macaroon and I wanna bite it. So cute. Low key, I'm gonna be that creepy girl that sat in the back of the class with all the horse drawings all over her book covers and has a massive stuffed penguin collection on her bed. It doesn't help that I'm single with cats either. I need to get laid. <gasps> no way! What is this? Oh, I needed these! Tail light service hose. They're supposed to be covers unless, I didn't know that. Okay, shrug covers. Safety glasses. Oh man! He sent me a minty owner's manual and brochure for a 91 MR2. It's like the warranty paperwork that goes with the MR2 also. Oh my God! It is the dealer brochure for the MR2. That is so gangster. The blue or black sport trim fabric that I have with crimson red. Somebody argued with me on the car view. I did the MR2 in the comment section. It said my seats in the MR2 were just faded and they weren't really blue. This says you can order a blue sport fabric. I was right. Anyway, rant over. Thank you, John, for the box of MR2 
goodies. This stuff is like museum quality. Mm. Oh, I owe it to everyone to make the MR2 perfect. What is this, Chris? Get it, it's from Chris. Like two in a row, this is crazy. I cannot believe this. It's the complete booklet of all the documents that go to a 2001 Audi TT. I don't even know what to say. I can't give up on the TT. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Damn it, I'm gonna cry again. Thank you, Andrew, for the Raptor plate. Please keep in mind I'm going through this stuff extremely fast because I'm trying to cover everyone's stuff that they sent in mail time and it's really hard to do while keeping the video a length that keeps the YouTube algorithm gods happy. Thank you, Doug, for sending this. I have needed one of these for the longest time, not just with the MR2, but with the TT as well. That's got some air in it. I thought it was all bled out, but there's some air in it. This is fancy. It's DEI. That's what DEI stands for, Design Engineering Inc. Apparently DEI watches my YouTube videos because they saw that I ran out of this when I was working on the MR2 and the TT and I like wrapping the hoses with heat wrap because I don't cut corners when I work on cars. Thank you DEI, I will definitely be using this. I'm probably that guy right there or maybe the MR2, I don't know yet. Thank you David for the penguin. I mean for the Sarah, this is the penguin talking. It doesn't say who it's from. It's a big meaty crimper and cutter for doing battery cables, like when I was doing the battery relocation on the Focus, which I need to redo the terminals on that guy. So thank you, whoever sent these. I appreciate you. Thank you as well. I will too get shoved into a compartment in a vehicle. This says I can't use a knife opening it. This is incredible. I'm sorry for the glare from the lights, but Fabio in Rome, I think it's Rome, sent me this. This is so awesome. Had a drag coefficiency of 0.31. It was rated at zero to 60 in 5.9 seconds. At only 200 horsepower when it was stock. Thank you so much. This is an incredibly sweet and thoughtful gift. Oh, that's so crazy. I can't believe somebody sent this. This is, this is insanity. So my MR2 is missing the spare tire. It's a brand new MR2 spare tire and the toolkit that goes with it too. Thank you, Callie, for the laser pointer and the Subaru hat and the keychains. I will use this from now on. Thank you for everybody that sent license plates. And if you notice, there's none on that back wall right now. I'm redoing the license plate setup on the walls and I'm gonna get a better way of securing them so they don't fly off when a wind gust comes in here and end up having these things destroy the paint on a car. So they're going back up in the wall. Just gotta sort some stuff out. And uh, I'm gonna wrap up the video here because I got a stack of letters I gotta read now while I eat dinner. I gotta get, get it. I gotta get dinner. I'm so hungry I can't even talk right now. So as far as the TT goes, it will continue. I will fix this thing. I don't give up, and it will live to see another day. Okay, I stay positive. So anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye.